What's up my friends, it's Mike again. Glad to have you guys back. So today we're gonna to talk about the Apple Studio display. So the version that I have here is the one with the nano texture matte display. It also has the height adjustment, so it is the fully loaded version. So I've been using this for the past two weeks now and uh, my experience was not the best. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you what I love and what I hate about it and see if this is in fact the right monitor for you. So when I first got the monitor, the unboxing experience was really cool. This box was designed so that you can just open it up and take the monitor right out and the box actually acts as a case. So if you need to transport the monitor around, you can just put it back in the box and take it anywhere. And this makes it super convenient, especially if you're gonna return it. When I was starting to unwrap everything, I could already feel how heavy the monitor was and the build quality. So everything felt really premium right off the bat. So the reason why I got the nano texture display is because I'm using it in my living room so I know there's gonna be a lot of glare and when I plugged it into my MacBook Pro I immediately saw a difference and uh, it's not a good one. So I quickly put on my glasses and I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. When I was reading my emails the words look fuzzy. I was taking my glasses on and off to compare and it's not my eyes it's the monitor itself. So I think having the nano texture all over the display really affected its sharpness especially when you're reading text and I could really notice the difference because I've been using the LG 5k display for like a month now so I was really confused at why people would choose this option in the first place so I decided to test it out for a few more days so after using it for a bit longer to edit photos and do a bit of video editing the anti-glare on the screen does work it really helps diffuse the light and make it not as reflective and I was using my laptop screen and my iPad along with the display and I could really see the differences there so if you do have a lot of light coming behind behind you and you usually see a lot of glare on your screen, the nano texture would help with that, especially if you do a lot of graphic work or video work. Because when I was editing my photos, I couldn't really see a noticeable loss in sharpness. The image quality seemed really good, the color accuracy was on point. And the cool thing was that the color on the studio display actually matched my MacBook Pro screen. So having a 5K resolution on this display just wasn't that impressive to me. And again, that's my fault for choosing the nano texture display. I did go into Apple Store and check out the normal version and that looked a lot better. So I would really recommend you going to the store and checking them out and comparing the two if you can. So the 27 inch form factor for my is a bit small. That's why in that setup I had to use both the monitor and my MacBook Pro screen at the same time. I usually like to have Notion on the side so that I can read off my script when I'm doing voiceovers. So if my configuration is like that, I do feel that the screen is a bit too small. With a 27 inch display, I think I would need two of these monitors to feel comfortable doing what I usually do. Moving along, the other thing that I like and not like at the same time is actually the stand. So the build quality of the stand is actually very premium. It moves up and down very easily. This is very useful if you're using a MacBook Pro, you can adjust it higher so that the screen is just gonna be right below it. The height adjustment mechanism is very impressive. However, just make sure not to lift it with one hand at the very end of the screen or this could happen. So the monitor stand scratched out my desk mat and the screen itself dinged my table and put a hole in my chair. However, there's not even one scratch on the stand or the monitor at all, so I'm super impressed with the build quality. The other cool thing about the stand is that you can actually swivel it like this very easily. If you wanna show up to someone on your screen, you can just like turn it around like that. And this is nice because you don't have to use a monitor arm. The setup is simple. And most importantly, it looks good. And I think that's the reason why people would get this for the flex. Because when you walk into the room, it looks like a very designer product, very aesthetic, very beautiful. However, when it comes to any designer things, you're gonna have to pay a bit more. Well, in this case, a lot more for that look. But for myself, the major problem for me was that you can't adjust the screen horizontally. So I don't know if it's my table or if it's my floor that's uneven. Because when I placed my level on top of the screen, it was just a bit off. So when I'm staring at the monitor, it's always like a bit unleveled and that just really bothers me. I can understand why they didn't add it so that it's a bit differentiated than their Pro XDR display, which costs a lot more. However, this monitor and the stand isn't cheap either. I had to pay a few hundred bucks more just to get the height adjustment. So to fix the problem, I did have to slip a little piece of paper under the base to kind of level it out. And when you're paying this amount of money for something like this, this stuff just should not happen. So looking back, maybe I should have got the one with the VESA mount so that I can put it on a monitor arm just so I can make it 
like perfectly horizontal and level. Now something Apple has done really well is that I think this might be the best all-in-one computer. I love the one cable connection, it provides power to my MacBook Pro, and the speakers and the webcam is all built into the monitor. The speakers are actually really good and it might be the best. And right now I'm going to compare the sound differences compared to my LG monitor so you can see for yourself if it sounds better. And next, something that's really important are the ports on the back. So there's one Thunderbolt 3 port and three USB-C ports. So in actual use, it's okay. The Thunderbolt 3 port powers my MacBook Pro for a one cable connection and it's like a hub and everything. That's cool. However, in 2022, uh, people are using Thunderbolt 4 ports now. And the other thing is that it will not allow you to daisy chain your monitor to other monitors. So if you wanna connect multiple of these studio monitors, you're gonna have to put them in different ports of your MacBook Pro. Whereas with my LG monitor, I can plug it directly into the monitor to another monitor. So that's a bit confusing why they would arrange the ports like that. And uh, the other confusing thing is why do they have a chip inside the display. So I think it uses the A13 chip and um, yeah, I don't know why. Is it supposed to be an iPad or an iPhone? Can you airplay things to it? No. Um, can you operate it as an iPad in the future? So I don't know what Apple is gonna use for that chip. Hopefully there's more functionality that will come with it. Because something that's cool is that you can actually update the software of the display. They're actually gonna fix the webcam and make it better in performance, more sharp, and all of that good stuff. So after using it for this long, the big question I have here is, who is this monitor really for? And who is supposed to buy something like this? So right now, my conclusion is that I don't think it's made for normal, average, content creators, consumers like me. Because at this price, won't it make more sense to get the 24 inch iMac instead? That actually has a computer built in. But seeing how simple it is to just plug your computer in and everything pretty much standard, you don't need to buy extra speakers or webcam and all that. I think businesses with flexible workspaces would really enjoy using something like this. Because if they only bring their laptop around, they can just simply go up to a monitor, plug it in and have it all functioning. That's really simple and really nice. But besides businesses, if you're a really big Apple fan who wants to match the color space in your display to your MacBook Pro without any tinkering and have it all simple, that is another reason. Otherwise, if I guess if money doesn't matter to you and you like how it looks and how it makes you feel, then it might be the right monitor for you. So guys, I really wanted to love this display. However, at this point, there's just too much confusion for me. The price to value isn't there. I think there's better out there. If you found this video helpful, remember to like and subscribe and turn that notification bell on to get the latest updates about my channel from YouTube. Also, if you're still watching right now, thank you so much for supporting my videos and watching till the end. Make sure you drop a lightning emoji in the comments below to let me know that you watched up to this point. And that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.